Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we might get started. Um, welcome to the special meeting, obviously, of Prospect tonight. Um, apologies, we have Mayor David Lachlan and Councillor Alan Harris. And on leave, we have Councillor uh, Barnett and also have, uh, sorry, another apologies from Councillor Stanton as well. Uh, report, there's one report and two verbal presentations, or two sets of verbal presentations for tonight's meeting. Uh, so we'll deal with the report first, uh, which is report 3.1 on the agenda. Just ask for somebody to move that report. I'll move it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lee, do you want to speak to it? And somebody to second the report. Thank you, Councillor Evans, do you want to speak to it? Oh, okay. Anyone else would like to speak to it? Okay, all those in favour? Um, so we'll move on to the main or the main component of the meeting tonight, which of course is the <coughs> presentations. I'd like to welcome obviously lots of interest in the gallery as well, so welcome tonight. Um, tonight isn't it isn't really about debating the uh, virtues or the merits of the proposed changes to the development plan. That's really an opportunity to provide comment and for respondents to speak directly to council and to the elected members on your views about the development plan. Um, just so everybody knows, this meeting is a special council meeting, so therefore it is recorded. And so um, by speaking tonight, if you are one of the speakers coming up, that will be recorded tonight. Um, and it will be put onto YouTube later on, I believe, um, as a special council meeting. And uh, Councillor Standen, who, who is an apology tonight, did want me to make special mention that he was watching all the other councillors will be the whole proceeding tonight. Um, all elected members have received a copy of your written submission, so thank you for those. And so we would encourage you to focus on those particular points that you want to get across to the next members tonight. Um, you will have five minutes and we'll, we'll monitor those five minutes fairly closely in your written uh, presentation. And so we would ask you to be very specific about what you want to say and uh, get across your main points if you can. All the written submissions and a summary of tonight's meeting will also come to the full council um, when it considers the report a little bit later on, um, probably in a couple of months' time. And just to give you a bit of background, I'll hand over to Chris Newby, who's the Acting Director of Community Planning and Communication, just to give you a bit of a sense of um, the, the plan and the amendments. Thanks. Um, so changes to Council's development plan were anticipated in the drafting of Council's strategic plan, uh, which sought to recognise the rich and valued history of the Council area by increasing the number of places that are protected from demolition through the increase of heritage control. Um, Council commissioned heritage consultants McDougall and Byers uh, to undertake a review of the existing historical areas and local heritage places and to identify possible new places for listing. Um, the outcomes of this review formed the basis of draft policy that would increase the number of local heritage places and the extent of the historic conservation policy areas. Um, the criteria for these new places and areas are prescribed under the Development Act. So it's, not, it's not a process whereby a council or its heritage advisors um, walks the streets picking which buildings it would like to preserve. Um, there are criteria against which these are assessed. Basically, a development plan can designate a place of local heritage value if it displays historical, economic or social themes that are of importance to the local area or it represents customs or ways of life that are characteristic of the local area. Or if it played an important part in the lives of local residents, if it displayed aesthetic merit, uh, design characteristics or construction techniques of significance to the local area. Um, or if it's associated with a notable local personality or event, or it's a notable landmark in the area. So you probably most of you will be aware that all the pubs in Prospect are listed as local heritage places because of the contribution, I guess, over the years that they've made. Even though the original heritage fabric of most of those buildings has been altered over the years. Um, historic conservation policy areas are proposed where the general character of buildings in the area is such that the area as a whole warrants retention and enhancement through greater controls over future development. It's not anti-development. It's just more stringent controls are put in place to ensure that future development respects and enhances the intrinsic character of that area. Uh, the process of identifying additional places and areas was undertaken in confidence 
um, and the community was not notified of any proposed heritage listings while the policy was being drafted. So it was a surprise. Um, this approach is common when changes to heritage policy are proposed so as to avoid speculative demolition problems. Um, this is also why the policy takes immediate effect when consultation commences. Uh, the outcomes of the heritage review that I mentioned earlier um, recommended small extensions to some of the existing historic conservation areas and five new historic conservation areas, um, 79 new local heritage places and no changes to the existing histories of local heritage places. <coughs> um, at the end of the consultation period, the reviewer of access, we have received 55 submissions um, 23 submissions concerning historic conservation areas, um, 14 in favour and 9 against, um, and 27 submissions on local heritage places, um, 12 of whom agree with the proposed listing, and 13 disagree, and 2 neither agree nor disagree, um, as well as 5 other submissions from government agencies and local government areas. Um, after tonight's meeting, some of the contested properties will be subject to further independent review um, by a different heritage advisor. Um, these reviews, in addition to the comments received from the community, may result in further changes to the DPAs. It's unlikely that additional places or areas will be proposed. But if there are, Council would need to get the permission of the Minister for Planning to undertake further public consultation. Um, all submissions that we've received and the presentations tonight will be summarised into a report that will be provided to Council on the consultation outcomes. Um, once any additional changes to the DPA, sorry, the development plan amendment, are endorsed by Council, these DPAs will be sent to the Minister for Planning for approval. Part of that process that the Department for Planning, Transport and Infrastructure undertake is a review of those changes and also advice from the Local Heritage Advisory Committee. Um, they will provide advice to the Minister in much the same way as Council staff provide advice to Council on the proposed change. Uh, the DPAs must be approved by February next year or the interim controls will lapse unless the further extension is granted by the Minister. That gives a bit of background to how we got where we are tonight. I'll hand back over to Deputy Mayor. Thank you. So we'll move to item four on the agenda, which is the verbal presentations for the historic conservation areas development plan amendment. I'll call people forward individually uh, to come forward, sit up here at the table, and you can address council from there. I'd also ask that you initially state your name and your address for the record, and so that we can have that item to find out where you come from. Each speaker, as I said, will be allocated five minutes to speak and I'll remind you of the four minute mark if you need it, uh, that you're about to run out of time to give you a chance to also wrap up. At the conclusion of the presentation, questions may be asked by elected members, and we've got four elected members here tonight, and that could be for clarification or asking you to expand on comments that you, you've made. Uh, I just encourage you to use this as a forum to address your elected members and to address your council. Um, and any questions you might have tonight on the proposed changes will be noted and addressed in the final report to Council. So we'll start um, with the first speaker under the Historic Conservation Area Development Plan, which is uh, Ms Elizabeth Chris. Um, Elizabeth Chris, 8 Cassie Street, Collinswood. Okay. Right. Well, firstly, I'd like to congratulate the Council on undertaking this Heritage DPA. And secondly, I'd like to say that the Residents Association supports the two DPAs as discussed in our submission. However, we also support the Prospect History Group's research and recommendations about adding a number of items of significance to the Local Heritage Places list. I would also, also like to reiterate that if my home was significant, I would happily accept it as being listed as heritage and I would also happily move into a heritage listed house if I was able to afford it. I'm not interested in opposing something on other people that I would not accept myself. 
When we became involved in all the debates about rezoning along the main roads, we were promised that if they were allowed to go ahead, the infield in prospect development would be reduced or eliminated. However, however, that now does not appear to be the case and we are losing more and more character homes to be replaced by homes that do not fit with the character of the area and belong more to somewhere like Mawson Lakes. The Council needs to honour the promises that were made during the rezoning and reduce infield development. Many people have moved into Prospect because of the character homes and don't want to see them destroyed. The eastern side of Main North Road appears to be earmarked as one of the development areas of Prospect and too few of the character homes are protected. There are very few streets that have an unbroken sense of character anymore. The Prospect Design Guidelines, the Historic Conservation Zones and Local Heritage Places states, the architectural diversity of the district has remained as a strong statement of previous eras. By recording this diversity, this document aims to preserve City of Prospect's unique character for future generations. It goes on to say, the challenge for council and property owners is to appropriately maintain this character while ensuring that new development is complementary to the history of the area. I ask that council thinks carefully about how this is applied to the eastern side of Main North Road. Burwood Avenue is one of the few streets that has not yet been ruined by development, such as a medallion home, as has now occurred in New Bond Street, where the pleasant symmetry of bungalows in the street has now been broken. Burwood Avenue currently has a beautiful ambience, supplemented by a picturesque street canopy due to the heritage nature of the houses in the street. 2A Burwood Avenue is a Salvation Army Hall that is already a local heritage place and of historic significance. The connection with the street is also significant. The Federation Era Meeting Hall is constructed of face brick which has been painted with rendered piers projecting above the parapet, a rendered parapet with mouldings and return walls with crenellated parapets. The contrasting blood and bandages appearance of the brick and render are typical of public buildings of the Federation style from 1890 to 1915. To complement this building of historic significance, the street has from the period of 1870 to 1900 15 symmetrical cottages, five single fronted cottages, one return veranda single fronted villa, two double fronted and two double fronted cottages. From the period 1880 to 1910 the street has five return veranda villas, one symmetrical and one symmetrical cottage that has been modernized. There is one late Victorian villa dating back to the early 19th century. For the period 1920 to 1930, there are six bungalows and, and two bungalows that have been rendered and two re return veranda bungalows. Details of these styles and their importance can be found in, on the council design, council design guidelines for historic conservation zones and local heritage places, which I'm not going to repeat. But out of 48 homes, 40 were built prior to 1930 and a number were built prior to 1910. The street has a 1950s post-war a modern triple fronted, a modern two story return veranda, a reproduction symmetrical cottage which blend in well with the pre 1930s homes. Even the modern cream brick um, home and the unit complex and several modern houses do not at this stage significantly detract from the character of the street. In this street on the eastern side of Main North Road, the homes illustrate the transition from 19th century styles to 20th century modernist styles and there is an indication that the developmental trend was northward. Although those houses might, or might not be outstanding examples individually and collectively, collectively they are a remarkable historical record of residential development on the eastern side of Main North Road. I ask that the Council give serious consideration to establishing Burwood Avenue as a historic conservation zone before the character of the street is unnecessarily destroyed by having an ill-fitting type home or a concrete box as is currently under consideration for Richmond Avenue is constructed in its midst. Richmond Avenue is a similar street to Burwood Avenue with its well-maintained array of 1930s homes. In a similar way, Richmond Avenue should be given comparable consideration for for protection as a character street in prospect that is worth preserving. By the way, the road in Burwood Avenue could do with a significant make makeover. It is old as the houses. Its ageing state has produced a cacophony of ridges akin to the lines on an ageing face, none of which are pleasant to drive over.
Our next will have played uh, 10 years of age. <coughs> Yeah, uh, my name is Tanya Beach. I live at 17 Charles Street, Prospect, and that's in the proposed library conservation zone. Um, and I wholeheartedly support Council's initiative with the historic conservation zone extensions. Um, I'm an architect and I've worked extensively with heritage buildings so I understand what's involved and I understand what the consultants are, are driving at. We like our part of the street. Um, it's just a pity in a few years' time people are going to say that we should have preserved the bungalows and they're all disappearing as well. So, um, I just regret that it's taken this long. The initial report was done in 2010 and we've lost a few of the the houses that were part of the, the continuous um, matching, they all match and fit together. Um, like the dwelling at number 19, Charles Street is described as a contributory place that the original dwelling isn't there anymore, it's been demolished and it was fairly unusual, it had cast uh, concrete stonework. So that's been lost and the proportions, what it's been replaced with doesn't sit with the street at all. Uh, but there was, I had no grounds to object because it fitted on similar footprint to the original dwelling. Um, I don't understand how some of the properties that are mentioned, they don't have a lot of original features and none of the double fronted villas are mentioned, it's only the single fronted. So I wasn't sure why they neglected some of the properties in that row. Um, and I also regret the loss of some of the fences. I think fences should be included in the heritage listing or having to um, replace the fence with the correct style when it deteriorates. We've lost a few around the area there, including um, down James Street. There were two fences that are similar to what would have been in front of my house and I've photographed them and I've kept some records so that I can reproduce it on my house because it's the appropriate style but none of them are left anymore. So. And I just wanted to yeah, wholeheartedly support what you're doing and I just wish you to come sooner. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> and I'd now call uh, Mr Robert Stewart. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Hood. Uh, the property in question is 55 Vine Street Prospect. I'd rather not give my residential address uh, if that's all right for the public record, but it's in the correspondence that I gave to Council, so you've got access to that if you need to. Um, I make no comment on the overall proposal. My submission really concerns the property that we own at 55 Vine Street Prospect. Um, my wife and I purchased that property late last year and um, it was uh, appealing to us because we've lived in Prospect for I think about 18 of the last 20 years or thereabouts. Um, we like the area, it's on a quiet street uh, and it's a large block with a big frontage. We had the ambition of uh, building a home that we'd reside in at one stage, um, at some future stage, and uh, so we found this uh, old dilapidated house on Vine Street and uh, it was our intention to uh, to demolish that house at some future stage and, and build a home for our family to live in. Uh, we particularly like the fact that it had a 21 metre frontage, it's 930 square metres, it's a big block of land. We have no intention to subdivide it, um, it was to build one home for us to live on. Before purchasing the property last September though, I thought I'd better just call council and make sure <coughs> no issues that they perceive with that. Um, I made a phone call to, uh, I can't give his name unfortunately, I didn't record it, but a gentleman uh, um, in the planning department. I specifically asked him if, the, if he foresaw any issues with that property being demolished to build a heritage style home on that site at some future point. Um, the young, he was a youngish gentleman, I could tell you that from his voice, uh, and he said to me, 
very categorically that no, he didn't see any issues with that whatsoever, uh, and that, in his words, something to the effect that it would be a r routine approval for, for that, um, that intention. So with that in mind, that sort of security, if you like, we went ahead and purchased the property within a couple of days after that, about $680,000, including fees. Um, and I'm somebody who appreciates heritage. I wouldn't want to knock down what I would consider an, an appealing heritage-style property. In my view, this house certainly isn't. It was built in 1948. Um, I was told um, when I contacted somebody in the council recently, I won't use their name, but um, that it was actually listed on the council documents as being built in the 1920s. That's not true. It was built in 1948. Uh, and um, furthermore, it was suggested to me that the I, I, when I inquired, when the uh, development proposal was uh, became public, uh, I, I rang council and said, well, has that changed the situation with our home at all? Uh, you know, can, are we still able to demolish the property to build in some future point? And I was told that that was unlikely now. Uh, this is just a few months after we were told that we would be able to demolish the property. So you imagine we weren't entirely thrilled by that uh, turn of developments within a few months. Um, anyway, I, I said, what, what was the issue around that specific home? Uh, I didn't, to me, it certainly doesn't appear to be in heritage value in any way. And, and we specifically bought it because we wouldn't want to demolish it, a villa or something of that nature. We'd demolish something that, you know, we could improve the street in our view. Um, and I was told that the veranda was of interest, the sort of the porch area that had been uh, at the front of the house. Um, so I did some research and I spoke to the previous owners of the house and they were quite categoric. They put on the, the porch themselves in the 70s. So it's not even part of the original dwelling, but it was put on in the 70s. And uh, uh, they don't have any documents to verify that, unfortunately, but they were quite categoric. They remember it clearly. So that, um, in my view, is uh, not, you know, certainly not part of the original structure anyway. Um, I think uh, a couple of other issues that were, were raised was that the, the, the fencing at the front of the property was some, of some heritage interest. Um, uh, I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the property, but in my mind the, the, the fence is an eyesore, to be honest. It's sort of a chain wire fence, with, you know, what people might use for a chicken coop sort of thing. And uh, when I bought the property, it was literally falling down and I, I had to get sort of star pickets, which I personally did. And, hammered it into the ground so it wasn't encroaching on the footpath so you know it wasn't going to harm anyone. It's, it's fine now. I'm satisfied it, it's sturdy and won't fall down now, but it really needed that work when I did it. So I just think somebody's got their wires crossed on the wrong house or something. There's so many details that are incorrect about this house. It seems to me they're actually talking about a different property. I don't know if the address has been mixed up or something. So um, one minute. minute. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I guess the other thing of note is that um, I was told that the lanes policy was uh, was the relevant policy for Vine Street and that there was a desire to preserve the laneway, which I generally support. I think that's uh, not a bad idea at all. Um, but our property on the southern side of Vine Street doesn't have a laneway behind it at all, of course. So, so my submission to Council tonight uh, is that uh, it's, it's our desire to demolish that home at some future stage. Uh, to build a home for our family to live in. It would be a, a style in line with heritage prospect properties, sandstone front, bullnose, veranda, central hallway, high ceilings, all that sort of thing, colour roof, etc, etc. Um, and you know, if, if we're given permission to proceed and do that, then I guess we'd certainly be pleased with that. As I said, it's not our intention to subdivide, uh, but merely to build a home to live in at some future stage for ourselves. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I trust that's been simple and clear enough. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, now call Mr. Bob Ritchie. Thank you, Chairman. My name is uh, Robert Ritchie. Uh, I live at 30 Vine Street. I've been there for a little over 40 years. Um, I uh, have a great deal of empathy with what Mr. Hood said. And I draw attention to the fact that I did letterbox Vine Street yesterday uh, and I recognise some 25% of the gallery as being here from Vine Street. I didn't go further in the Heritage Zone, but that's what I'm speaking to. And uh, I'll briefly say a supportive statement. The idea of uh, preserving the character in terms of the traditional homes is supported. Uh, there are issues about uh, knockdown. I, I have an apology from a couple of people and 
One of them was in my letterbox this morning, uh, three or four pages to give me a, a single apology uh, after yesterday, yesterday letterboxing. And th this lady's uh, a little higher up than 55 on the same side, but above Broad Road, and uh, she's got a property in very similar condition. It is extremely uneconomic to do anything with it. She's had builders in, and engineers in to have a look, and uh, uh, and I believe there are issues about this notion of what constitutes uh, a demolishable building. I, I think my quick reading of the, of the paper indicated there were holes in, in the policy. I, I can't go into that in detail. Uh, I, I'm telling you that 55 is not the only house in the street that that problem applies to, uh, but I think it can be overcome by having a, a very simple element in the policy that I think is inherent in it, that the traditional character be preserved by current and new developments. Now, I want to address just one point uh, that I know I have strong support for, and, and that is the extent of the built area. Whoever did this plan up slipped in a number in front of the percentage thing that, that amounts to, oh, it says 40% is the limit of built area. Now, I think that's got nothing to do with the traditional, and I know walking down Vine Street that I'm pretty safe in saying there's not a single house that fits at the moment. Now, I know that means that uh, nothing's going to be knocked down, but uh, it also means nothing can be extended. And in my place, for example, well, for all these places, we're looking at about 25 squares as the maximum for all shedding, uh, all garages, all patios, all roofed areas. Uh, and uh, that's pretty limited. It means for many houses like mine, I can't even add a modern amenity such as a second toilet. And I think that's a problem. I'm drawing attention to the fact that the proposal, in my opinion, does not add to amenity. In fact, it detracts from amenity in terms of this 40% rule. Now, the first time I was aware in my 40 years of a ratio being introduced, it was two to one. One third of the property had to be left unroofed. And uh, I'm, I was told uh, last week that uh, the number is now 50-50, uh, except that this proposal is already in force for the temporary purposes and it's now 60-40. Uh, but it means that people can't do any type of development to improve the houses that are here in this heritage area of the Prospect Lanes. Uh, and I doubt that that was the intention of Council. I strongly suspect that some enthusiast wrote in a number and I would run the challenge for any member of Council any single member of council tonight to tell us how a reduction to 40% improves amenity and makes the homes any more like the traditional character. And if, okay, that's fine. I, I'm just about done. I've thrown out my challenge. I, I, I would, I'm genuinely would like to hear it. I, I suspect that we are dealing with a slip. And I have a suggestion for fixing it. The easiest way to edit is by deletion. Uh, I think market forces, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to argue about price of houses, but it does come down to what the way the market values amenity. And I, I think that we're suffering a detriment to amenity, therefore a detriment to what the market would judge our houses to be worth. And I'm arguing this in terms of amenity, not in terms of trying to protect my pocket. Um, and, uh, and I'm open, I'm available until next Tuesday for further consultation, but uh, not much can be done in five minutes, so I will stop now. Any questions? Any questions? No, thank you very much.
Thank you, sir. Um, I now call Margaret Crudeau. <clears throat> I'm Margaret Prudhoe from 7 Olive Street Prospect. Um, I uh, bought the house in the area because of my love for houses of that type and it's been absolute dismay to me to see at least four houses in Olive Street knocked down in the, in the, recent, in the recent, recent past and um, I'm absolutely delighted that this DPA now is has finally come back from John Rao and is finally going to go to the next stage. Um, I think that people in this area buy their houses for that very reason. They like, they like this kind of house. They don't want to see uh, other kinds of houses being built in the area and I don't like to see the knocking down of what I consider to be perfectly good houses as happened directly opposite my house at number, at number uh, 8 Olive Street where there's now just a total um, blank space for the time being anyway and I have seen the plans for the new dwelling that's supposed to go there and I'm not very impressed with that. Um, it was, to me it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a very much a mistake that this should have been allowed to happen at all. And if this can repair that and uh, not allow any further things such as that to happen, that will be a really good thing. So I'm hoping that everyone will support it and that it will go back to the government, state government and it will actually get through properly and we won't see any more of this. But actually the character of Olive Street has been uh, quite spoiled already, which is very sad. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Oh, any questions? Thank you very much. I now call Mr. Peter Langham. Hi, um, I'm Peter Langham. I live at 31 Sherbourne Road, Medindy Gardens. Uh, my background, I'm a resident of Medindy Gardens, which is one of the proposed historic conservation zones. Um, and it's been picked because it's a fairly homogenous 1920s uh, area uh, with only very little uh, modern buildings. Fortunately, this DPA has actually stopped more demolitions that have been happening in the last 12 months in Medina Gardens, which is a good thing. Um, I'm a member of National Trust and I also serve in the National Trust State Council. I've been a bit of a heritage, um, a lot of heritage interest. So in the last few years, I've been nominating places for state heritage listing among other things. Um, so I fully support that Heritage cons Historic Conservation Zone proposal, but I believe there are opportunities for inclusion of other significant areas. Um, Lizzie Crist has mentioned Burwood Avenue. I had a count of all those houses down there, and yes, there are a lot of really old houses. And I suspect that there are a lot of other streets in Prospect that probably would fit the same category. Um, in terms of local heritage, I fully support all those local heritage places uh, that have been nominated. and retention of existing ones. I believe there were some going to be removed. Um, also, due to the delays in this um, process of DPA, some heritage places have been demolished, such as the two-storey building at 62 to 64 Main North Road, opposite Scotty's Motel. This is a beautiful building that could have had the shop front removed and been restored back to something like what it was. Um, I'm also concerned about owners who don't want their property listed. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to turn this into a debate, but I've been to another similar hearing to this in the southeast of the city and you hear people say, you can't listen to my property, it's not in as built condition, it's been re-roofed, it's been rewired, the kitchen's been upgraded, rear extensions been added. We even had the case in the southeast of the city where a guy had an old building which had, had all the stuff removed and he put all the original veranda and stuff back on again. And he says, you can't listen to my property, it's a replica, it's not heritage. Um, this is the sort of stuff that goes on. So. Heritage DPAs are not about preserving buildings in mint condition. Uh, we're not about museums, it's about preserving the historic character of the area. And many unsympathetic external additions can be reversed. Um, I have dealings with Sandy Wilkinson, who's on Adelaide City Council, he's a heritage architect, he's done projects where he's restored the fronts of buildings in the city, he's put 21st century extensions on the back, and so the people have their lovely 21st century interior, but they have a historic uh, frontage on their property. I've seen photographs in North Adelaide of similar shops and that, which are now houses, 
because the shot bit has been removed. Um, one thing that's of concern, which is perhaps not referred to this in this DPA, but uh, the state government is proposing to change heritage legislation. And that's a bit of a danger sign because there's going to be an audit of listed buildings to delist many of those listed prior to 1993. Uh, that's because as um, the criteria that were listed uh, weren't applied to those buildings. It just said, this is an old building. Um, but the newer ones, of course, have been categorised under the criteria. And the other thing that is a bit of a worry is con contributory items. The government doesn't apparently like contributory items. So the, ca the characters, contributory items contribute to the character of an area. And if that's removed, then half of our character is going to disappear. So I think that's all I've got to say. I've been well in my five minutes. But um, <laughs> thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realise they're going to be too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So that includes um, the verbal presentations from the local, sorry, from the historic conservation area components. We'll now move to the local heritage spaces. And as I just mentioned, if, if respondents have actually put applications in against both the amendments, um, they do get the opportunity to speak twice. And the first person we'll see, Lang Lang, who's behind uh, Margaret, you also, Margaret Cordoe, also had the opportunity to speak. Do you have the opportunity to speak a second time against the um, oh, local heritage spaces? No? Okay. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to. <laughs> the third uh, speaker is Tristan Nazar. Thanks, guys. Um, what number seven, Cassie Street, Collins? And I was just kind of disputing the kind of... Um, <coughs> the uh, heritage listing being put on my place. And the basis of my dispute really is about driving through the, the, the council of prospect and identifying 10 other properties of similar of the same characteristics that do not have the heritage listing placed on their house. So my, my, my main point is all about consistency in this plan. We're going to do it for one house, let's do it for all of them. And I think that's been raised by a number of people who are actually for the proposal here today in the speeches in the context that probably hasn't gone far enough. They, they said, my house is a single front of the house, so therefore the, you um, put a heritage listing on single front of the houses, and as mentioned by the person I was sitting next to before, you haven't gone ahead and done double fronted villas. So my comment here today, I just really want to be brief, but it's just consistency is what I want to, um, to occur across this proposal. Thank you very much. They're called Mary Jane Richardson. Also here, David Kilner. Uh, David Dolphin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just as soon stand. Uh, I'm a 42-year resident of Prospect. When I first came to Adelaide, uh, I was running around everywhere saying, what's wrong with these people? Don't they know what they've got? Because everybody was putting cream brick fronts onto bluestone buildings. I just couldn't believe it. A lot of that has stopped since. But I do have to, uh, I have to uh, remind the six councillors here that this is the council which uh, saw St Helen's house demolished without a demur, uh, is currently not doing very much to respect uh, the heritage aspects of memorial gardens. Won't go into that in detail. Uh, I'm someone who in my own street was observing a, uh, there are two fine 1920s bungalow houses there. I was observing one of them sort of at risk. I got an architect to study it and the answer was we could preserve the house and have three dwellings on the block all complying with all the necessary rules. The place was demolished and two one and a half storey places were put on it that have no sort of merit uh, that anybody can see. I think it's a great pity that that 
particular house, which had a very large frontage, uh, was demolished. When I was last here, uh, I believe it was over the 30-year plan, I described the council's uh, response to the 30-year plan as timid. And what I'd like to ask the council now, of course all the councillors have changed since the times I'm speaking about, uh, I'd like to ask the councillors to take a courageous view, uh, to, be, to take a long view. You're looking at, at prospect for the next 50 years and 100 years. You're not looking at the next five years. So let's, let's take a big picture. Something not too impressed with in the current report is, uh, is uh, the mentions of Unley in, in a couple of places. So I, I'm not too sure how much uh, care has gone into this report. I should have given my address. It, it's 38 Buxton Street, North Adelaide. The reason for that is I couldn't find an apartment in Prospect when, when we needed to sell a uh, Federation-style house. But one of my achievements is took about two years of lobbying that I, I managed to, uh, with the help of Mr Newby here, uh, to get into the design conservation guidelines, which the council is very proud of, to get the section covering the Federation period. Believe it or not, those guidelines went up to 1900 and then started again at 1930. So uh, the fellows have done the right thing and got that in. I'm here on behalf of the one house which has been left out. It was announced tonight that it's, it's proposed that 79 places be uh, confirmed or be examined. There are actually 80 in the printed list. And one of them has across it proposed to be delisted. Uh, that is 114 Main North Road. I assume the councillors have read the paper about that, so I won't say about it, except this, the description. It's amazing. The page in the report says proposed to be delisted and then gives a long account, a reasonable account, of what is, what is the merit of the place. It doesn't say at all why it should be delisted. The merit of the place uh, is, it's actually, it actually uses the word remarkable. It's an unusually constructed uh, building, uh, a good representative, and it's been adapted to another use. It's a government building. It was built obviously to government standards and it's a fine 1920s sort of building. The second reason, so structurally it's interesting. The report itself says so. The second thing is the report gives no history whatever. Nearly all the entries have some sort of history. This one does not. Right. The, the consultants apparently didn't know that this building was the Nailsworth Police Station. And the reason it has that additional doorway is clearly because it was the police station. And what a funny thing not to regard this building as, as, uh, as valuable. And why is it valuable? Because it is a landmark in the area and when everything else there is three and four stories high, which I agree with, I think it will be a little gem that people will really appreciate. I also think the building is capable of having plenty of practical uses in the future of, of a government and, and more particularly a community kind. I think in 10 years and 20 years, even though now it's surrounded by tawdry, grubby, very low grade commercial buildings, in the future that building will be able to shine. And I think people should, this council, should put 114 Randolph Road back into the listing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ellen Thank you, Mr Chairman. Members, uh, I speak on behalf of uh, Ray and Audrey McGlashan, the owners of 136 Prospect Road, McGlashan Brothers Furniture. Our property was listed on the Heritage listing in 1998 
And we're asking that that listing be reviewed and removed. Uh, the listing is not based in any real fact. The, uh, it's a fairly scant sort of listing. It lists that building as a bluestone building when it's actually a brick building. And it took into effect that no account that the building was substantially rebuilt in 1991, six years before it was listed. And that included removing all the plaster off the side walls, all the windows. We had new shop fronts, new parapet, new veranda, all made. We had them made in the heritage style, which was my father's uh, wish at the time because he'd seen the uh, Fremantle uh, wharf area that had been redeveloped when he was on holidays over there for the uh, America's Cup. And he said, well, at the time, that was the Prospect Council's um, current development plan, was to bring back strip shopping and bring back the heritage look of the area. And we feel that we've been disadvantaged by the fact that we've actually spent our money uh, extra cost and made our building look heritage, even though it is at this stage a, from our perspective, about a 23 or 4 year old building and it was listed as a heritage building at 6 years old. Now, uh, that was, that's the uh, main thing. We have evidence, we've got architects drawings, we've got everything to show that, and we've got photographic it. The building is different. It's in the heritage style. But being in a heritage style doesn't necessarily make it heritage when it's only a 20-year-old building. And that, that was our, our point to make to the, to the committee. I know everybody else. It's also having a heritage listing is an impediment to further development under the new development plan for, for multi-storey buildings. Any building that's got a heritage listing on it is going to be a, a harder building to redevelop. So that was our submission for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Any questions, Alan? Thank you very much. Just as one other point, we have heaps of photographs. If anybody wants to investigate, the original investigation didn't include speaking to the owners of the building until such time was after it was listed. And then we made a verbal protest, but it was ignored. So thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Now call Mr. Rob Perry. Your Worship, Deputy Mayor and Councillors and Committee Members, I'm Rob Perry from the 100 Golder Road, Crystal Brook, and I'll put better half Brenda. Uh, we own the 58 Prospect Road um, property, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. First up, has everyone seen, has, has everyone got a copy of my submission? With a photo on the back, is oh, no one, everyone's got it? Thank you. Um, I'll just get Brenda to distribute a few little stones, just as a sample to, to express to you. Um, if you run into trouble, of course, you can always throw them at the rate payers, you know. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, um, the S is for sandstone, the I is for ironstone, uh, and uh, and, and the other stone, <laughs> I for the iron stone. And of course, we've got this, the stone here, which is the one in question. Um, when you build a wall, a wall is built basically a stone generally five or six times larger than this. And it's got about a half inch of mortar between the stones. That's how normal, like the sandstones on Prospect Road, absolutely beautiful. They're built like that. You can see the definition of the stone. When you build a limestone wall, which is this material, and that's, that's a bigger piece than what you people have got, basically you only see a small part of the limestone. If you look throughout Prospect, you'll see a lot of limestone walls. They're not on the facades like in our case, like in 58 Prospect Road and also Harrington Street down the side, that's got beautiful sandstone. But the actual limestone is around the other side wall. And that limestone is only about that much is seen. The rest is cement render. The reason it's done with cement render is simply so that the wall stays strong. Because the wall isn't strong. This material isn't strong. And I want to demonstrate, like, if you strike those two 
bits of material, nothing falls off. That's Einstein. In actual fact, with Einstein, you can start a fire. A lot of farm machinery up our way start fire by reaping items, and that's what happens to them. If you use the case of limestone, which you see more down the brost, it's a very crumbly product. And you can see by what's on that towel that it's very crumbly. And that's why most of it's surrounded with cement and you only get a small bit of limestone showing. And they're not on facades. There must have been a lot of limestone in Prospect. They would have used limestone in the walls because it was cheaper. The ironstone, which we got home, and also the sandstone, probably come from Adelaide Hills. And that's, that would have cost money. That's why a lot of buildings like our Prospect Road, 58 Prospect Road, has only got two sides, the two sides that people can see. The other two walls, as you know, every building's made of four walls. The other two walls, are the back wall in particular, is out of timber with cement sheeting and rendered cement over it to make it look like a, a concrete, like a stone wall. But in actual fact, it's a very poor wall and it'll probably only last 15 to 20 years. If you look at this limestone wall, which is a wall that can't be seen on the property, the limestone wall's probably got 50 to 70 years life. As you see around Port Wakefield, when these, if they're not looked after, limestone packs up very, very quickly. And that's why I feel there's a contradiction. I have no problems, as a lover of stone, seeing the two facades, the one facing Harrington Street and the one facing Prospect Road, being listed, and also the chimney, if you wish. But the other two walls will only incur a, a substantial issues for people going forward. It won't be me, I won't be here. But I'll get to do the one wall, the back wall, but the other wall, the limestone wall, will need doing, will need repairing, and it can't be. So what I ask you very nicely, if you would, is by all means, put the two walls under heritage listing, the ones facing Harrington Street and Prospect Road, because they're very, very worthy of it. They're magnificent sandstone walls, and they're very, very worthy of it. But please do not encumber the whole building, because the other two walls need to be replaced at some point in time. Other than that, the only question I have for you, do you wish me to leave the big stones in case you need them, or would you like us to collect them all up? Uh, take them all up? No problems. Brenda will do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> we better keep them if there's some walls that need replacing. <laughs> you can keep them because we want to head home two hours away. <laughs> You've got all the little stones left? Do you want them? You can head off. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We'll go back to Crystal Brook now. <laughs> Thank you. You get the next one. Um, I'll now call Damien Dawson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, yes, my name is Damien Dawson, a town planning consultant at Planning Chambers and joined uh, by Jason Pruszynski, Heritage Architect at Catalyst Architects. Um, we've been asked to appear on behalf of uh, Dr Sharma, the owner um, of the property at 20 Alpha Road in Prospect, which is the Keandra nursing home. Um, I was engaged by Dr Sharma to um, provide some initial advice uh, to him when the property was, was preliminary listed um, back a few months ago. Uh, I went out and had a look at the site. Um, and upon my first viewing of the site, it, it did to me uh, appear as you know, the stately sort of home that the um, heritage consultant engaged by council describes in, in the report. Um, talked to Dr Sharma and said, look, I think we need to get a heritage expert involved um, to have a, a better look at 
what uh, modifications and what's left of, of the building on the site. Um, Jason was engaged to do that work. Um, Jason and I had the benefit of going out and having a thorough inspection of the site inside and out, walked, walked through um, the property um, and really found that there, there was some significant modifications as you would expect with a property that's been used as a nursing home and private hospital for, for 20 to 30 years. Um, so there's a large number of uh, extensions and additions which we have detailed in the report uh, and those original elements that are left had, had been um, quite modified for that newer use that it's being used for at the moment. Um, I'm happy to hand it over to Jason to, to detail in, in, in a bit more um, around those the modifications. Thanks, Damien. Um, just briefly, obviously the report contains all the necessary information, but um, just touching on the main points, um, the house uh, is actually quite a standard, normal, modest home that was once on the site. The uh, Heritage Review describes it as an expansive turn centric Queen Anne style residence. It, it is not that. Uh, the reality is only a third of the frontage comprises the original house. Uh, in terms of the buildings on the site, that original house is uh, less than 15% so of all area buildings. When we look at the integrity of that house, as you appreciate, it's significantly modified. It was built in uh, 1875. It was modified in 1901. We've done extensive research, which is great to discover all this. Uh, it was then change of use in 1977 to a nursing home hospital, private hospital. You can only imagine the change of use that that does to a home. It's irrevocable in terms of what it now is. Um, in terms of the integrity, there's only four front rooms that barely have an understanding of it being a home. Uh, the rest you would have no understanding at all of it actually being a, a, an early standard home. So we really left that less than 7% of the site is left as any semblance of being part of a home. Um, I would suggest to you that if we're looking at the integrity of the house, it's exceptionally low. The um, connection of being a home and its setting is entirely lost and really unable to be retrieved. Uh, and this is important when we then look at the criterion and how that sits in that criterion. Um, it, it certainly is, um, I would put to you a standard Edwardian home. There is many, many, many fine examples of that still being used as homes. This is a private hospital. Uh, and what is, remains of that has been built around by a lot of uh, mock heritage uh, buildings that attempt to um, mimic that, which is obviously intrusive and not good. Um, and I think you know, the report says the rest. It, we, we couldn't actually find too much, we couldn't find any merit under the criterion that would warrant its uh, listing as a local heritage place. So yeah, we're happy to leave the, the documents um, with, with the council staff and councillors to, to digest. Um, as I said, Jason's report details a lot of this and is supplemented with a, um, a heritage, um, a bit of background study that we've um, got Peter Donovan to, to prepare in terms of um, the, the previous ownership and, and use of that site. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like unfortunately council's consultant hasn't had that time or the ability to, to do the thorough research and, and look through the site. Um, we're happy to provide all those documents and uh, give to the consultants um, if, if they review the building in, in the future going forward. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you very much. I'd now call Peter and Sue I am uh, Peter Eisler from 8 Rose Street at Prospect. Um, I'm here tonight to uh, oppose the proposed terrorist listing on our property. On the surface, this may not appear to be a major issue. However, the fact is that allowing such a change to occur will impact on our ability to do with our property that what we wish to do. Before purchasing the property 12 years ago, we investigated to ensure that the house was not heritage listed. I asked the, the um, agent at the time because if, if it would have been heritage listed, we would not, wouldn't have bought, bought the property for the potential to be able to um, expand on it and also to subdivide in the, in, in the future. Um, the actions of the council um, to list our property is is in effect a retrospective action by a government body to change the rights of an individual. I am uh, publicly stating 
and supporting the view that properties cannot be heritage listed without the agreement of the current owner of the property. Two possible outcomes. First, to provide um, a straightforward approach of these properties where the owners um, agree to have the property listed um, and the, uh, the current entitlements will never be ordered unless the, uh, they volunteer to do so. Or the property could be purchased by a government body listed for heritage and then resold as a listed property. Our proposal provides um, certainty for all and ensures investment in South Australia and will not be threatened by the uncertainty of councils changing or government changing these, these rules. Um, the, the entitlement to an owner's right to deal with the property as they see fit within the constraints of the town plan. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's come out of the blue and then obviously we're here tonight that not only um, uh, this is not the end of it, that there may be some homes which, which uh, we won't, you know, the council wishes to, to investigate further. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a lot of, any property in prospect, there's a lot of work to do to keep them up up to scratch, and so you buy these properties thinking, well, that gives it gives other people opportunities to be able to to buy these, and obviously, because we invested in this some 12 years ago, was towards our towards our super because I, I work for myself, there was no other opportunity to put money into super, so all of a sudden things things have changed, the goalposts have changed, and um, you know I I think it'd be interesting to see how many people are um, for heritage listed properties that actually live in one and who have bought one. So, you know, that would be a question that I'd, I would be interested in anyone after the meeting would actually come and come and say to me, oh, I actually bought one because I wanted the heritage a listed house. So um, I think that's about all that I've got to, to present to the meeting tonight. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I might just call over um, the few names that I mentioned before, just in case anyone has stuck in. Um, Robert Chua on the room, Mary Jane Richardson, and David Kilner. Okay, well thank you very much. That concludes the verbal presentations to Council. Um, as you heard earlier, Council will be receiving a report based on um, what we've heard tonight, that they can consult the report and any further work on the development plan amendment. And that will be a, a public meeting. Uh, council will consider that in a public paper, so that will be something that the members of the gallery will be able to read, um, and that will be over the coming months. Um, council the coming months. So thank you all for attending tonight. Um, I've got prepared and closed.